Hello, my name is Felipe Gomez Cuba. I come from Atlantic Research Center of University of Vigo. And today I'm going to present joint work with Tomas Osuño, Junsio Kim, Michele Polese, Sang Wumbak, and Michele Sorzi. In this work, we studied full stack issues on hybrid informing in millimeter wave 5G systems. The outline of the talk is as follows. I'm going to introduce the 5G millimeter wave cellular system architecture. Then I'm going to describe hybrid informing systems and how they are implemented in 5G. Then I'm going to discuss the scheduler design and the constraints pertaining to the hybrid informing. And finally, I'm going to present our implementation of uh, multi-user MIMO hybrid informing in the millimeter wave and a stream module and simulation results. In 5G, for the first time in cellular systems, uh, the frequency range 2, also called millimeter wave, is used. In millimeter wave, the carrier frequency is very large. This permits to use very large bandwidths in the transmission, and also, thanks to the small wavelength, it is possible to pack a very large number of very small antennas in small silicon surface areas. Moreover, 5G new radio frames are very versatile and they permit all sorts of uh, different options for resource allocation in frequency, that is OFDM subcarriers, in time and in space domain through the different antenna ports. The, inter the interaction between this um, highly versatile frame allocation and the hybrid beamforming architecture is not very well understood, especially in relation to higher, higher layers of the protocol stack, such as application traffic. Moreover, there was no previous full stack open source implementation of millimeter wave uh, simulators with support for spatial multiplexing, multi user MIMO, and hybrid info. To describe the hybrid informing scheme, we must first describe the two components of the hybrid architecture, which is digital and analog informing. In digital informing, which is perhaps the most classical view of MIMO systems, there's one digital to analog converter or analog to digital converter per antenna. Uh, with this scheme, we can perform the tr we can perform digital signal processing to match as many digital signals as antennas using matrices and so on, and we have the maximum flexibility to design the beams and the transmission. However, the power consumption of analog to digital converters is very high, and having so many analog to digital converters as antennas is, um, is too much power consumption. On the opposite end, we have analog beamforming. In analog informing, a scalar digital signal is converted uh, to analog and fed to all of the antennas using a network of splitters and phase shifters, which permits the, permits the implementation of a single analog beam, but this does not support MIMO uh, multiplexing. And there are hardware limitations to the beams when they are implemented in the analog domain. It's a compromise. Hybrid informing uh, tries to get the best of both worlds. For this, a key concept in 5G is the concept of antenna port. One antenna port is one uh, connection to the antenna array that has a separate analog to digital converter. So with NP antenna ports, we can, we can use in low dimension some of the digital MIMO techniques we know, and each of the antenna ports is fed to the antenna array using a different a network of splitters, which implements a different analog beam. For example, if the millimeter, millimeter wave physical channeling analog is H, and the analog beam forming vectors are W and V, each antenna port experiences an equivalent scalar channel gain that follows this expression. And when we have several antenna ports at the transmitter or the receiver, we can build an equivalent low-dimensional digital MIMO channel of this form. Now, due to the fact that uh, multipath in millimeter wave is sparse, the, matrix, the analog matrix H is sparse too. It has, uh, 
it has a low rank and the digging values decay very fast. And due to this, it is not very uh, efficient to allocate more than one digital transmission in parallel to the same user. So we assume a system in which the base station has NP ports, each of them is a multiplexing layer, and each of the users have a single port, and a, a number of users are receiving at the same time different spatially multiplexed bins. The classic, uh, the classic uh, way of implementing analog beamforming is through codebook beamforming. Uh, since the, there are hardware limitations to the analog beams, there's a finite set of beams that can be implemented. We can put this uh, finite set of beams in a table, in a beam codebook, and the base station transmits reference signals using different beams at different times. The users measure these reference signals and report back which beam is best in, within, within the list of beams in the table. For the single layer case, uh, it is optimum to use the max SNR criterion and to choose the strongest received reference signal. However, in the case with more than one layer, when we use special multiplexing, this is no longer the case. There is going to be sideload interference between the simultaneous transmissions and the max SNR criterion is not optimum. To account for that, we consider a hybrid scheme with MMSC precoding or combining on the digital stage of the hybrid informing scheme on top of the selection of the same analog beams from codebook beamforming in the analog part. It's a problem with the implementation of hybrid informing with MMSC combining. And when, the, when the users are located transmissions that start at the same time, since we assume that the reference signals that estimate the channel coefficients are transmitted at the beginning of each transmission, when two users start transmitting on different times, they are simultaneous eventually, but at, at the beginning they do not observe the reference of the other on the, at the appropriate time, and they cannot implement the digital combining. Therefore, to account for that, we implement a scheduler that, that introduces a padding when a transmission ends before the other transmissions of the other layers, a blank symbol is left until all the layers are ready to start transmitting again at the same time. Moreover, our scheduler applies the same principles of padding and equal transmission starts uh, consecutively over a number of blocks or bundles of transmissions that are simultaneous. These transmissions can be downlink retransmissions, downlink new data, uplink new data, or a blink HARQ. We took all of these concepts we have discussed of hybrid informing, multi-user MIMO, and scheduling, and we implemented this in the NS3 millimeter wave module. Now, our implementation is to the best of our knowledge, the first open source full stack millimeter wave implementation with multi-user MIMO hybrid informing support. For this, we created a brand new plug and play API for beamforming solutions such, such that beamforming algorithms can be swapped for another um, without recompiling the, the simulator. Moreover, we have implemented our scheduler using the existing plug and play scheduler API, substituting it for the other schedulers, and we have made the necessary modifications in the physical layer and in the MAC layer so as to support multiple simultaneous transmissions by the same base station at the same time. We took our simulation module and we performed two experiments. In the first experiment, we studied the performance of the physical layer with the two beamforming solutions. Now, as a sketch or simplified um, idea of how the physical layer is modeled, we consider that the SINR is modeled as the power of the signal, signal divided by the interference of the side load plus the noise. So, in the single layer case, when there is no side load interference, the SINR equals the SNR. In our simulation, uh, we show that the CDF of the SINR is as such. Next, we test, uh, we test the four layer case, but using still the beamforming solution that was optimal, optimum in the single layer case. Now, we see that the CDF of the SINR drops significantly and this can result in much worse performance of the physical layer. 
when when the simulator model the models the the physical layer the SNR is compared SNR is compared to a threshold and if the SINR is poor the transmissions are dropped. So this results in lower uh, higher block error, block error rate. Finally when we implement our hybrid informing solution the SINR CDF is almost indistinguishable from the single layer case. This means that most side low interference is taken is taken care of and the performance of the physical layer with proper precoding in the four layer case is equal to the performance of the physical layer in the one layer case. Now, after the experiment for the physical layer, we experiment with the traffic and for this we consider an application that sends a very high traffic demand. In fact, it's twice as much as the capacity of a single layer frame allocation. We depict the total throughput at the destinations and we see that only half of the traffic is delivered in the single layer case. However, in the four layer case, almost all traffic is delivered except a small fraction that is lost due to block error rate. In addition, we depict the cell load and we see that with the application that has a high demand, the cell load is about half of the total frame resources for the four layer case, which is consistent with the fact that this is the about the the demand that we have designed. And of course, in the lightly loaded uh, case with a much slower application, the cell load is much smaller. We've, we separate the data and the padding, and we see that the amount of resources that are wasted in padding is very small and acceptable. So the solution of making the scheduler use padding is not a severe waste. So, in conclusion, a multi-user MIMO can dramatically increase the capacity of millimeter wave cellular systems using hybrid informing. However, the subsystems for the informing, channel pilots, and scheduling, uh, scheduling cannot be designed separately. We must take, take into account that the pilots must be available to other users to suppress the side load interference using uh, hybrid informing and the scheduler must uh, do some padding or other solutions. This shows the importance of full-stack studies of millimeter wave cellular systems. For future work, we would like to model even more imperfections in the pilot schemes and control simulating. Now, our system does not assume perfect CSI, we only assume that the channel is seen perfectly when a pilot is transmitted. But in specific points in time when the pilot is not transmitted, there's no channel state information at all. Another possible line of future work is non-linear multi-user minus schemes that are even more powerful, such as successive interference cancelling and joint field decoding. Uh, whereas in our current implementation, we assume each user data is decoded independently. Moreover, there are proposals for schedulers that take into account the multi-user MIMO hybrid informing beams with much finer detail and that avoid putting together at the same time users that will not lead to good performance of the informing system, which uh, is an interesting line of future work, but introduces some limitation in the ability of the scheduler to flexibly respond to the traffic demands of the applications. And with this, uh, we conclude uh, the talk, and I thank you for your time, and please feel free to ask any questions. Thank you.